All right, guys, the time's finally come. Let's talk Space Marine 2. This game is fantastic. The cutscenes, the swarm technology, just incredible and incredibly stunning. People slapping a six out of 10 on this game is just completely bonkers to me, but to each their own, I guess. It's a game that promises to be a complete treat to Warhammer 40K fans, but also a treat to third person action combat enjoyers as well. We'll explore the story. Don't worry, we won't get into the spoilers here. We'll dive into the operations mode and the PVP Eternal War game mode as well. Towards the end of the video, we'll move into my thoughts on the game, but essentially the game's awesome. It's incredibly refreshing and it took me roughly seven hours to complete the campaign. I know some people are upset with how short the campaign is, but to be honest, guys, I would much rather a great, stunning and just flawless seven hour campaign over just a crappy 50 hour boring campaign that the only reason that you're continuing to play through the game is because you've already sunk in like 30 hours into it. Space Marine 2 continues the saga from the original game. The story, which builds on the cliffhanger ending of the first game, offers a compelling narrative filled with Warhammer 40k's iconic lore. You once again step into the armor of Titus, a Space Marine, as he battles against the Tyranids in a war-torn universe. The game delivers a more refined story with an engaging cast of characters that I will keep to myself for now to not spoil the story for any of you, but this narrative is not just a continuation, but an expansion that adds layers to the universe's lore and the characters involved. If you're a Warhammer 40k buff, you will certainly gobble this story and world building up. But even if you're someone like me, who's always been interested in Warhammer 40k, this game serves as an excellent entry point in my opinion. Space Marine 2 refuses to waste your time. It offers a straightforward campaign with a mix of linear progression and engaging combat. The game's melee combat, oh dudes. The, the melee combat in this game is so good and so, so, so much fun. It's received significant improvements from the first game with weapons like daggers, chainswords, and massive hammers providing satisfying and brutal executions. The sound design is top notch, making each weapon and execution feel incredibly impactful. And speaking of melee combat, let's talk about these executions for a little bit because they are simply fantastic. While playing through the game, when you take damage, you will lose your shields first and then your HP. Executions will allow you to recover those lost shields, so instead of running away, looking for health packs, and waiting for your armor to come back up, the game encourages you to not only jump into combat when at low health, but jump into the melee range of combat, as that will again replenish those shields. This, in my opinion, is an excellent gameplay feature, because Space Marines would not just run away from the heat of battle, they would jump smack dab right in the middle of it. And the audio aids, the gory visuals that come along with these executions, and again, it's just fantastic and everything that you would want out of a space marine game one improvement they could do for the game and again this isn't immersion breaking or game breaking just a slight nuisance is the parry system parries feel very inconsistent there will be many times where you feel like that should have been a parry but it just didn't connect so much so that i just audible to dodging everything instead as this pretty much guaranteed that i wouldn't take damage whereas parries were like a 50 50 chance or at least that's what it felt like but when you do get that parry off Boy, oh boy, is it perfect. If the enemy is an elite, then you will stagger them, allowing you to either dish out more damage to the stunned enemy or get off a perfect shot to the enemy's head. And if they are minor enemies, the parry will straight up kill them. One last thing to note before we move on to the operations mode is the weapon combos. For all melee weapons, if you pause the game, you can see a list of combos that weapon can do. Some ranging from light and heavy attacks to others having alternate modes like the power sword. So be sure to look at that when picking up a new melee weapon. Those combos will certainly make your life easier. Trust me. Space Marine 2 does give Gears of War a run for its money when it comes to the chainsaw combat. I do hope that the Coalition and Xbox take a good look at what Space Marine 2 does right when it comes to the core combat. As you guys that know me well, you know how much I absolutely adore the Gears of War franchise, specifically Gears of War 1 to 3. Space Marine 2 certainly raises the bar when it comes to third person action combat, and I cannot wait to see what the Gears devs cook up for Gears of War E-Day. Now let's dive into one of the standout features, the operations mode. This mode can be considered the main meat of the game for many players. It's packed with content and offers a different experience from the campaign. In operations mode, you get to choose from six distinct classes, each with its own set of weapons, abilities, and skill trees. The tactical class is a versatile class with a balanced loadout, ideal for players who want a bit of everything. It excels in both ranged and melee combat, making it a solid choice overall. The assault class is equipped with jump packs, this class specializes in high mobility and close quarters combat. They can quickly get in and out of tight situations using powerful melee attacks. The heavy class is, you guessed it, <laughs> the heavy hitter of the group. 
They wield heavy weapons like the Multi Melta. This class is perfect for players who enjoy dealing massive damage and taking on large groups of enemies. The Vanguard class uses high impact abilities like the Grapnel Launcher. It focuses on aggressive tactics and powerful melee attacks. The Bulwark provides support with healing abilities and defensive tools. It's crucial for keeping the team alive and providing buffs during intense battles. My current go-to when it comes to these classes. And lastly, the Sniper. Known for its precision and specialized weaponry, the Sniper specializes in long-range weapons, firing powerful shots from afar, and can use the Camo Cloak to evade certain situations or revive an ally undetected. Each class has its own progression system, skill trees, and cosmetic customization options, adding a significant amount of replayability and depth to the game. It does take about 30 hours to max out one class, which was a worry of mine going into the game. I personally think that this is way too long. And my worry here is that players would feel like they're stuck to one class and it kind of feels like you're discouraged to diversify your play style. At least that's how it made me feel. Hopefully they can do something to trim down this time a little bit. I think cutting it in half or even more like cutting it in a quarter and getting that down to like maybe eight to 10 hours to max out one character would just add to the replayability of the game. It would make you go and actually want to play other classes. But right now, just 30 hours for max out one character, it's a little nuts in my opinion. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think down below. After selecting a class, you progress through these operations with two other teammates, either just through quick match or two of your buddies. And as you complete these operations, you unlock higher difficulty modes for these operations. There's currently only six of these operations right now, which is a bit on the lighter side. We do know that there are more in the works, and we'll talk about that year one plan later on in this video. The Eternal War mode is Space Marine 2's foray into PvP. It's designed to provide a competitive experience where players can battle it out in Warhammer 40k's gritty universe. The mode consists of simple yet intense combat with various maps and game modes that reflect the chaotic nature of the Warhammer 40k universe. Whether it's capturing objectives or engaging in all-out brawls, Eternal War delivers a compelling PvP experience that complements the game's cooperative and single-player offerings. I have had a ton of fun with it so far. Melee damage also just completely ignores shields, so if you see someone with full shields but almost no health, just go melee them. A quick overview on the three different game modes is Annihilation, which is basically team deathmatch, first of 50 kills wins, Seize Ground, essentially domination, where you just go and you try and control three of the zones, and lastly, their take on King of the Hill, capture and control. Again, there's nothing fancy with the PvP here. They aren't trying to create something that's cutting edge. It's simple and to the point, but it's a good time. It will definitely scratch that itch for any PvP enjoyers out there or anyone that just wants to take a break from the other modes in the campaign or the operations. It serves its purpose well. Visually, Space Marine 2 is absolutely gorgeous. It's stunning, guys. The game's art direction marries beautifully with its setting, offering a mix of gothic architecture and futuristic warfare. The color palette is a refreshing change and the level of detail in both the environments and the gore effects is impressive. From the skyscraping palaces of Avarax to the bloody aftermaths of battles, the game's visuals enhance the overall immersion and sense of scale. The arena layout and weapon placements in the game might break immersion for some players. It never did for me, but I could see how it could for some others. For instance, while Space Marine 2 handles this aspect more smoothly, the game does use mechanisms like closing doors behind you and opening new ones to load the next phase. Personally, I appreciate this approach as it brings a strong linear focus that I think more games should adopt. It again, it, it, it just kind of brings me back to that Xbox 360 era. Which just a ton of nostalgia there and with those types of linear campaigns. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's just refreshing to see a genuinely cooperative game out there right now. It's exciting to have a game that offers a complete campaign for up to three players, a complete PVE operations mode for the same number of players, and an Eternal War PvP mode for anyone like myself that enjoy dabbling into PvP a little bit. The game offers a solid range of melee weapons, from daggers and power swords to chainsaws and massive hammers, all of which are incredibly satisfying to use. I encourage everyone <laughs> to try a little bit of all the melee weapons, because all the combos and everything, just super cool animations and a lot of fun to use. While the arsenal of guns may seem familiar, there are new additions that provide fresh variations. Weapons like the Melta Rifle and Sniper add unique elements to the gameplay, making each mission feel distinct and engaging. Rarely did I ever feel like I was using the same weapons over and over and over again. Now, maybe that was due to the campaign only taking me just about seven hours to beat, like I said earlier, which again, this doesn't bother me as the experience was almost flawless, 
but it could bother others, so I wanted to bring that up. And again, I wasn't rushing through the campaign at all. I was taking my time and enjoying every second of it, not skipping dialogue or cutscenes. One thing I did not expect this game to have was major bosses. Like I knew that there was gonna be boss fights, but I didn't know that these boss fights were gonna feel like mini raids. Each boss has their very own unique mechanics. And again, it just made me realize how much I want that 40K MMO. Like that would go so hard, guys. I would lose hours of my life to that game. I don't know. You guys let me know down below. Do you think a Warhammer 40K MMO would be the way to go for this franchise? Like I think that that would be incredible. I don't know. Maybe that's just me though. Last thing I wanted to quickly cover is the year one content plan for this game. For September, they'll be providing ultra wide support, private PVE lobbies, and the Battle Barge Sparring Arena. For the remainder of 2024, they look to release new PVE missions, a higher difficulty mode, a new pistol, and enemy. My hope is the new enemy will be an additional boss for the operations mode, because like I said earlier, the mini raid mechanics caught me by surprise and I thoroughly enjoyed them. For 2025, we can expect several new PVE missions, PVP game modes, PVP arena, new enemies, new weapons, and my personal favorite, and unfortunately coming last, the horde mode. Everything I said here will be a free update to anyone who owns the game. The only thing having the season pass will get you is the cosmetics. So a W out of Saber Interactive for sure. One thing I do wish is that the horde mode was priority here. That's what I was looking forward to the most, but if they can release some great PVE operations with new boss fights and new mechanics, then I can wait for the horde mode no problem. Space Marine 2 is a worthy sequel that builds on its predecessor while introducing new features and improvements. Its story, gameplay, and various modes offer something for every type of player, whether you're in it for the single player campaign, co-op missions, or PVP battles. The game might have a few rough edges, sure, particularly with performance on PC and some design choices, but it doesn't detract from the overall experience. It's a game that stands out as one of the year's most refreshing titles and currently my number two game of the year, right under Black Myth Wukong. It could use an FOV slider for sure. <laughs> it didn't at all hinder from my experience of the game, but it sure wouldn't hurt to add it in there. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed it or a dislike if you didn't enjoy it. Don't know why you'd be into the video this far if you didn't enjoy it, but yeah, <laughs> leave a dislike if you need to. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Space Marine 2 if you've had a chance to play it. Are you thinking about getting it? Let me know down below. Again, it's a game with no BS. It respected the source material and has crazy good vibes. I highly recommend it to anyone out there. And until next time, take excellent care of yourselves, call your mother or someone you love, and goodbye.